Prepaid expenses. Prepaid expense can be defined as a cost paid for an advance but yet to be consumed. We're going to look at two aspects of recording prepaid expenses. First of all, we're going to look at the, the initial prepayment, which we'll deal with in the cash payments journal. And secondly, we're going to record the necessary balance day adjustment for the portion of the asset that's been used up by balance day. And this, of course, will be done in the general journal. Key point of noting is we record all of the GST at the initial time of payment and we don't need to pro rata the GST, hence there's no adjustment required for the GST when we actually get to the balance day. Okay, some key points in terms of the theory behind the prepaid expenses is that a prepaid expense by its nature provides a future economic benefit that will be used up within 12 months. So for instance, when we prepay rent for a year in advance, our benefit is we get to occupy that space for a full year. Insurance, if we prepay insurance, the economic benefit is protection from whatever hazards are at, that could affect um, our business financially. Hence, because we're creating a future economic benefit that will be used up within 12 months when we prepay an item, we classify it as a current asset in the balance sheet. But when we get to balance day, i.e. the end of the reporting period, and we've got part or all of the economic benefit that's been consumed, we need to do an, a balance day adjustment so that our general ledger and our consequential accounting reports reflect the value of the current asset that's been consumed dur during the reporting period. Okay, so consequently we do a balance day adjustment and we record the amount that's been consumed as an expense with the remainder, well that still stays as your current asset. By doing the necessary balance day adjustment, we satisfy the reporting period principle because we're matching expenses incurred for the reporting period against the revenue earned, and in turn, that leads to an accurate calculation of, our net, of a net profit. This means we also satisfy the relevance qu qualitative characteristic because our reports provide accurate and useful information that aids the decision making for the users of reports. Now, I'm going to go through a couple of examples here. The first one, We've got a business that's prepaid their rent 12 months in advance on the 1st of February and it's due to expire on the first on the at the end of January the following year and our reports are done annually at the 30th of June. So we're going to deal with the initial payment, we're going to post the payment to the general ledger, then we're going to do the BDA 5 months later. Okay, so key thing here is when you prepay an item, you must acknowledge it as prepaid whatever, prepaid rent, prepaid insurance, etc. Okay, there's three numbers here. We put the full amount of the check in the bank column, in case we have to do a bank rec. We split the GST and the amount um, from the actual prepayment. And in unit three, we'll never have a prepaid column. So you'll always record prepaid expenses in the sundry section. And remember the sundry section is for infrequently occurring transactions. So usually when we pay rent, it'll be once a month, but often once a quarter. Okay. So in terms of the posting from the payments journal to the general ledger, We've got a debit entry to our prepaid rent. That's because our current asset is increasing because we're creating a future economic benefit, i.e. the use of our property for 12 months in this case. We have a corresponding debit entry in our GST clearing account because any time we make a payment of GST, it offsets the GST we collect or charge from sales. And these two amounts form part of our cash payments total, which will, of course, be a credit entry in our bank. Then step two we need to deal with the amount that's been used up. Okay, and the golden rule for any type of balance day adjustment, whether it be accrued expenses, prepaid expenses, or depreciation, we always debit the expense, i.e. we've got a claim that's actually gonna reduce our profit and reduce tax. Okay, so in this case, 5 twelfths of the year have been used up. 1st of February to 30th of June is five months. 5 twelfths of 600 is 250. Make sure in your narration you briefly explain the transaction and it's a good idea to actually specify the time period that's been used up and the key thing is you must identify the source document to support the audit trail and it will generally, well it'll always be a memo. Okay, in terms of posting to the general ledger, you do a credit entry to the asset account because it's been partially consumed and 
we have a matching debit entry or a corresponding debit entry to our expense. So we actually create the account rent expense so that again we support the reporting period principle. Okay. And again, the reason why we have an expense is because we've got a we've got an outflow of an economic benefit in the form of a, a decrease in our assets, prepaid rent namely, and, and a simultaneous decrease in owner's equity. So that's what we satisfy the definition of an expense. Second example I'll go through is office supplies. So again, same dates, the business is bought on the 1st of Feb, $750 plus $75 worth of GST of office supplies. Then they do a stock take at balance day five months later. The time periods are relevant here. Key thing is we've only got $200 left. So we started with $750 and at balance day we've only got $200 left. So just like we did in the previous example, we're going to record the initial payment for the supplies in the payments journal. We're going to post it to the general ledger. Then we're going to do the BDA on balance day, which is 30th of June. So, first thing we need to do is record the initial payment, and like I said before, any time we pay for an item in advance, we're creating a current asset, and we must record and report it as such. So we call it prepaid offer supplies, $750 in the sundries, $75 in the GST, add them up together and you've got a check for $825. Okay, $750 goes in the asset account. That's the value of the asset as at the 1st of Feb when we pay for it. You've got a decrease in your GST liability and the total reducing your bank from the payments journal. We've got 200 left. So in our general journal, 750 minus 200 means we've used or consumed 550 of those office supplies. So follow the golden rule for BDA, debit the expense and we credit the asset. So again, in, make sure in your narration you identify your source doco. In your general ledger account, make sure you decrease the asset account so that the two, note here that our $200 footed final balance represents the amount of our stock take value. Okay, so that should all, your final balance in your asset account should match the stock take figure. The difference, of course, between what we started with and what we finished up with is your expense because we have a decrease in assets and a decrease in OE, satisfying the expense definition. Let's say we neglected to actually make the adjustment. This would mean that our assets would be overstated because our prepaid office supplies would be $550 too high. There's no effect on liabilities because the GST has already been dealt with. And our owner's equity is also overstated because we've neglected to record an expense. So our expenses are understated, which means our profit is overstated. And note both sides of the accounting equation are both overstated by $550. Okay, key thing to note when you're dealing with effects on the accounting equation. The effect should be on the same at both sides. Now some final points. Okay, some final points. When we make the initial payment, make sure you record it as prepaid whatever, prepaid insurance, prepaid rent. We record the full amount in the GST paid section of the payments journal. Don't need to touch it after that. And it always goes in the sundries column. We won't, you'll never have a prepaid column in your payments journal. Okay, when we post it or when we actually post our journal information to this cash flow statement, we record it as an operating outflow and we must identify it as prepaid rent expense or prepaid insurance, etc. When we do our adjustment at balance day, we always follow the golden rule for BDAs. We debit the expense and our matching our corresponding credit entry is to the asset because it's been consumed or partially consumed. Okay, we don't need to touch the GST. The tax office doesn't care about what period the GST relates to. So no prorating or adjusting the GST. Okay, the adjustment is recorded in the general journal because a balance day adjustment is a transaction that's not catered for by the four special journals and any entry that goes in a general ledger must be journalised first, hence it goes in the GJ. And finally, in terms of the general ledger, we close off the expense account to the P&L summary to help us calculate profit and to zero it off the expense account in preparation for the next period. And we balance off the asset account because there will be, a, or there could be, a, remaining, a remainder of the benefit that will carry over into the next reporting period. 
Thank you. And my next podcast will be a depreciation one. Hope you got some value out of this. Computer slogan.